Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Sound now? Ah! Every time. Technical difficulties. We're back. Is that better? Can you hear me now? Testing, testing. There we go. There we go. I said, how is everyone? How's everyone doing? Happy Friday. Good to see you. We'll start over. We'll run it back. I saw Dustin here. He said he was drinking a Booker's Rye. I was just about wondering, um, what the hell? Where'd you get that from? Said he's drinking Booker's 30th instead. Um, I mean, Booker's 30th is great. I love that this year. Whew, that stuff's good. Who else we got here? Dustin Martin, Mark JG. How you doing? Christopher David, as always. Good to see you, buddy. Jason from the Mash and Drum. Jason, I was saying, I um, finally got to meet you in Texas. You, Bobby, and Sam, uh, Bourbon Junkies I had hung out with before, but I missed the hangout before, so finally got to meet Jason. Man, Jason is, you watch his live streams, and his personality shows through so much, and meeting him in person, it like just elevates it to a whole new level. I mean, when we do collab live streams, Jason's the exact same person in uh, in real life, man. Yeah, I love, I love hanging out with you, bud. Matt from Whiskey Crusaders. Matt, too. Matt's another one I finally got to meet down in Texas. Um, just awesome, man. Matt, <laughs> we'll get into this when we start talking about the trip a little more. Matt literally wheeled in a whole entire, <laughs> I mean, like, like a, like, I don't know. It was this cart of whiskey. I mean, and we're not talking whiskey bottles. We're talking boxes of whiskey that Matt wheeled in to La Quinta. Boxes of whiskey. I mean, those things, cases upon cases. He had multiples. I had to, um, I had to bring some bottles to his room for the the following night, just so they would all go out at the same time. I wasn't sure when I'd be back. And um, I walk in his room, and it's like I just about got like a, a contact high just from smelling all the alcohol that was in that room. <laughs> Nothing was even open. All the bottles were still closed and sealed. But holy cow, it was like literally probably over two hundred bottles he had in his room at one point. Just crazy. I'm getting off track already. I'm already excited to talk about Texas. Let's see what else is here. ADHD fishing. How you doing, bud? Um, I believe Perry at My Bourbon Podcast just put out his Beagle Rare review. So go go check that out if you haven't yet. Um, Beagle Rare is making its way around the country. And um, it's only getting better, I think. So I can't wait to try it at the end. It's going to be awesome. Charles Ashworth, how you doing? Eric Wade is here. <laughs> Eric says, I don't remember last weekend. Eric, I thought you held yourself together really well. Um, you did really well. You know, you actually rented a car, so you had to be more careful than some of the rest of us. But, man, whiskey contact buzz. That's exactly what it was, a whiskey contact buzz. Drayman, Kentucky, how you doing? Scott from My Bourbon Journey, how are you? I was working during your live stream earlier, Scott, but I watched some of the replay on the way home. Uh, good stuff. I love it when Scott goes live. Some of my favorites. Peter White is in the house. Johnny Drum is in the house. Downer Pass Whiskey's in the house. Everybody, thank you all for being here tonight. Um, first things first, let's go ahead and pour some Texas whiskey. Since we're going to be talking about Texas first, I do have a flight lined up, some ideas for a flight. So we'll get into that after we pour some Texas whiskey. We're going to start with some bottles I bought about a year ago. Never found my way down to, um, to Texas. But um, this is the Texas Whiskey Festival blend. Now, this is a blend that's 29.4% Iron Roots Bloody Butcher Corn, 29.4 Iron Roots Special Purple, and 29.4 Balcones Mirador, 11.8 Andalusia Striker. So we've got a whole bunch of Texas whiskey in this bottle here. This was the bottle Crowded Barrel um, put out as their part of their Alliance series last year. Uh, ADHD Fishing says, no, it's at uh, Bourbon Blind. Yes, that's right. Kyle does have it at the moment. I haven't seen his yet, um, but my bourbon podcast with Perry, I saw him talking about Beagle Rare today or something on Instagram I saw. So let's get a cork pop here. This is a cork, right? Oh, that was disappointing. Let's try that again. A little better. So this is uh, two, two, um, two parts Iron Root. Iron Root is probably my favorite Texas distillery. Now, thanks to Matt, uh, I've had the chance to try a lot of different Texas whiskeys. And, you know, a lot of them are very unique and interesting, but man, Iron Root is just doing something great. Says on here, age 24 months. And let's see if it says a proof or not. 58%. 58%. So that will get the job done quick for you. Oh, no, I poured it into my. Oh, damn it. 
I poured it into my rock. All right, we'll know what this is, I guess, by... I marked the bottom of all these, so when we do the flight, we'll know what's what, but I just grabbed <laughs> the wrong glass, so we'll know this is the other one, I guess. I can't put normal Kentucky bourbon into a, a Glen that just had Texas whiskey. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Mmm. Ooh, boy, that smells nice. Amazing the color on this bottle. I mean, look at this thing. 24 months and this thing is almost black. It's just crazy to me. Texas heat, man. Hey, yeah, Drain Man Kentucky, odds Kyle puts four roses in it. I mean, as many store picks as that guy has, I wouldn't be surprised at all if that happened. It's probably going to. Thanks, Eric. Appreciate that. That was something really cool about going to Texas, actually. I don't know, that's not really a compliment. I'm taller in person than I am on stream, but getting to meet people in person, it's like, oh, I didn't know you were like this or like that. The height thing, though, threw me for a loop with a couple people. Bart, Bart from Scotch Test Dummies, I looked at him, I was like, oh my God, like looking up at that guy. He must have been 6'8", honestly. He was towering over everyone there. You don't really, I mean, he looks tall even in his reviews, but then when you meet him in person, it's like, holy cow, goodness gracious. Captain, make it happen. How you doing, buddy? We're starting with some Texas whiskey. We'll move on to uh, something else after that. <laughs> Jason Coates says, you're about two inches tall on my, on my stream. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty short. I'll give you that. <laughs> That's good. Boy, that actually drinks a lot smoother than 116, though. Mm. Texas whiskey is really something special. Steve Aronson, how you doing, bud? Trying some Woodford wheat tonight. Very nice. I have a bottle that I haven't cracked it yet. <laughs> NBA has him listed as 6'6", six, six, but he's really 7 foot. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Ooh, that's good. I'm glad I got these bottles. All right, let's go into the Texas trip a little bit before I start pouring these other samples too. So for most of us that went, uh, for those of you that don't know, there was a, a little whiskey gathering down in Austin, Texas. So Crowded Barrel, the Whiskey Tribe, um, Whiskey Vault, I'm sure you all know them. Rex and Daniel were kind enough to put on this whiskey event for all the Magnificent Bastards, all the people that are a part of their Patreon, and just people in general, to go to this event in Austin that they put on. So a lot of the whiskey channels were invited, fortunately for us. Um, it's kind of the big gathering. This happened last year for the opening of Crowded Barrel, but this year it was just the Bastards Ball, they call it. So for all the Magnificent Bastards, they got to go take, you know, be a part of this, um, this event at the Whiskey Vault, Whiskey Tribe. So, Chris Bragg, how you doing, bud? Good to see you. So, the event actually happened Saturday, but a lot of us got there Friday. Come to find out, some got in Thursday or even Wednesday, which I'm taking notes for next year now. <laughs> but it was just an awesome time being able to meet everyone, get to meet people you've never met, not even just the other whiskey tube communities, but get to meet the actual people. I mean, the actual people who I see in chat all the time, I can finally put some faces to some names I see in Discord or in the, the live stream chats. It was awesome. It was awesome. I flew in Friday. We actually had a um, an Iron Root barrel pick for an Iron Root Harbinger pick we were going to be doing. And that was ske scheduled to be at like 4, 4 p.m., 3 p.m., something like that. Originally, I would have made it with about two hours to spare, but my flight got delayed two hours. So I didn't even land until the pick was already going on about a half hour after the pick was going on. So I missed that. It was actually at Salt Lake Barbecue. So I missed out on the barbecue. I missed out on the iron root pick. And um, I should have really eaten a lot more before I went to the vault. <laughs> plans, the plans were I was going to, I was going to eat before the vault. I was, you know, um, if my flight had been on time, everything would have been fine. So, but that was day one. That was Friday. Um, if I was to do it again next year, which I'm, I'm really hoping to, we'll be able to do this again next year, get with everyone again. Um, I would love to get in today early just in case there are flight issues like this, get to hang out with everyone at La Quinta or, or whatever. Um, 
It, man. Uh, Eric said it felt more like a, a people's event than a whiskey event. The whiskey was just catalyst for conversation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Mark JG, man, I, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm getting to that. Okay. I'm getting to that, buddy. <laughs> so Mark JG put in the chat, um, we missed out on you Friday night, LOL, Bourbon Sane. So Friday night, um, after I finally did make my way to Crowded Barrel, we all kind of met. We got to meet with Rex and Daniel. Daniel kind of talked to us for a little bit, um, and he actually was kind enough to let us go explore the new vault. So the new whiskey vault, Vault 2.0, if you will. And as well as the original vault, we got to see the original vault as well, which was so cool. Um, they already had Psalms, uh, whiskey Psalms already up in the vault, ready to pour for us. Man, Matt, don't worry, your bags were safe. <laughs> I know. Oh my gosh. So, so Friday night, um, Daniel says, Hey, we're going to spend about two, two and a half hours, man, what, two hours, two hours, two and a half hours in the vault. Um, you know, so we'll wrap up at this time, blah, blah, blah. So anything in the vault is fair game. This is what he says. Anything in the vault is fair game. He says that to a group of whiskey, like massive whiskey enthusiasts, you know? Um, so me, it was my first time ever being to the vault. I've never seen anything like that in my life. Um, we didn't take pictures in the vault. You know, Daniel kind of said, Hey, let's go without cameras, without video for tonight. And let's just have a good time. Get to know each other. Um, just enjoy the camaraderie of this and enjoy the, just this, this type thing. So that's what we did. You know, we didn't take any pictures. We didn't do any of that, but my gosh, um, I mean there, I don't know how many bottles there are actually in the vault, but it was like, holy cow. Um, Carl Ivy, who's one of my patrons, he's here all the time. He was in there pouring, and he was pouring a lot. Um, he is a whiskey sommelier, so he has privileges to pour. Um, <laughs> good Lord. Uh, I can't even, people are going to ask, like, hey, was this in the vault? Was this in the vault? I can't even tell you. Like, it was just mountains and shelves of whiskey. I did the best I could. Um I blame Carl too, Matt. I really do. I mean, don't don't think you're getting out of it. Matt poured me a lot of drinks as well in the vault, but Carl was just like, he was just grabbing bottle after bottle, like, hey, you have to try this, you have to try this. Almost everything I tried in the vault was actually scotch. Um, you know, the bourbon. I mean, there was a lot of a, a lot of bourbons in the vault, of course. Um, yeah, <laughs> I know you poured, Matt. I know. Hey, Carl, there you are, bud. We had a great time Friday. Holy cow. Um, I, I was saying to Carl, like, my gosh, I, um, I, you, I, I actually sent Carl a message on Instagram and I don't even know if you saw this. Carl I was like, Hey, if you remember, I don't know what kind of state you were in after the vault. I'm sure you were fine. You were pouring. So, um, if you remember the stuff you poured for me, I remember some bottles you poured for me and I legitimately must have tried at least I mean, probably 25 whiskeys. Now, keep in mind, this was a, virtually a sip of each whiskey, you know, but it was probably 25 to 30 whiskeys. Um, I can't even get close to naming all of them. <laughs> I know I tried a Klein Leash 19, which was excellent. Um, Red Breast 21. I got to try a couple Ardbegs. I tried the Ardbeg 21, the Ardbeg 23, the Perpetuum. Um, I remember Carl climbing the ladder and getting a um, Nika 21. That was excellent. A um, Yamazaki 18, I believe it was as well. So, I mean, that's just off the top of my head, the stuff I remember that was excellent. Uh, when I first got there, Bill cracked open his bottle of Iron Root and gave me some of that too. So, I mean, even though I missed the uh, the cabinet, we got into the cabinet, Carl, didn't we? Oh, yes. Uh, Middleton, very rare. That was another one. Oh, that Nika 21 was so good. I mean, that bottle is probably so expensive, but my gosh, that Nika 21 was something so good. Mm -hmm. With about an hour to go before we left the vault, someone got keys to the lock cabinet, so we got to try some really rare stuff. Um, yes, that's what it was, Jason. Bunahaven 25. Oh, that stuff was great, too. I think um, before we even got to the vault, there was a Glendronic 27 that was really great too. Yes, we did have the uh, Ardbeg Lord of the Isles too. Mm. So much good whiskey. So you can see the problem. It's like 
whiskey after whiskey and like stuff you can never ever get to try in your lifetime. Um, <laughs> thank God, uh, at the end of the night, Bill and um, Bobby and Sam called an Uber and we all Ubered back to the hotel together. Thank goodness, because um, I was ready to go to bed apparently. <laughs> I was. So many whiskeys, but it was, I mean, just being in the vault was an incredible experience. It really was. It was incredible. Something I'll never forget. And I really hope we get a chance to go back next year. Oh, Eric, yes, that was in the old vault, actually. Got to try Smoky Monkey in the old vault as well. That was great. Long Row 16 was another one we tried that was great. Um, we got to try uh, Weller CYPB, which I had not had myself before. Um, for the record, it's very overrated. <laughs> not worth that price tag. I, I would probably take 107 over it, honestly. I was very, I was a lot of whiskeys deep at that point, but um, it, it was, it was okay, you know, very average. Bobby and I got to try that. Mm. All right, let's pour our flight here, and we'll keep talking Texas. Woo! Woo -hoo. All right, so for the surprise flight, I figured let's do a wild turkey flight. I was feeling like some turkey tonight, so. Let me, um, I got the bottles right behind me here, but I think I got a couple Russell's picks, a 101 and a rare breed. And, um, agree. Matt says he agrees. 107 is better, way better than CYPB. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. You know, I'm with you. I didn't think it was anything too great. So, um, this was, so we'll start with this. This is uh, Russell's reserve, my Riverside liquors pick. So we're going to start with that. That'll be in the blank. Oh shit. Then I'm going to know which is which. <clears throat> oh, I got one more Glen right here. We'll do that. So bourbon sand glass. Then I won't know. Uh, Riverside. <laughs> so what happened when you got back to the hotel, Chris? I'm getting to that. I'm getting to that. So the question of the night is, did I puke? And the answer is no. With that many whiskeys, I did not. Um, by some miracle of God, I did not. <laughs> um, but apparently in the vault, and Dan said this, the next day he told me, <laughs> I walked up to Dan from Bourbon Junkies and I said, I might puke tonight. I might puke tonight. Apparently I said that in the vault. Um, I don't remember saying that to him. But, whew, <laughs> yeah. Oh, it didn't happen, thank goodness. But it could have. I mean, it could have. Uh, ADHD Fishing asks, is that the Meyer? Yes, um, that, that is Meyer. That's my last one. If, if that's what you're asking, I'm sorry. The, um, the Meyer Russell's Reserve. So, any of you who have Meyer, if you live in the Midwest, you'll know what the chain Meyer is. They actually have a Russell's Reserve pick now. And I got it. So this this is a Camp Nelson A pick from Meyer. So that's pretty impressive. I mean, that's pretty impressive, I think. The other Russell's I have is, let me find it. Warehouse F. Warehouse F. So a couple different places. Victoria C, how you doing? Got to meet Victoria as well. Great meeting you too. Thanks for coming in. Um, Linux Cat asks, how many bottle kills did you do? In the vault? It wasn't just me, thank goodness. But we killed Nika 21. Um, Long Row 16 was killed as well. So we got to try a couple. Katie, how you doing? Good to see you. Um, we, we, we killed a couple bottles, that's for sure. Um, we sang some raining men a couple times in the vault, that's for sure. <laughs> Older 25 Boone in the wooden box uh, is better, Matt says. That's the one we tried, I think, was that. That's I, or, or was or was the other one we tried not not in the not in the wooden box. 30 whiskeys later, it's hard to remember. So let me shuffle these around. Sorry if this is really loud on the table. <laughs> yeah, da, da, da. Brian Walsh, good to see you, bud. Thanks for coming in. I think y'all saying five or six times, Carl said. That's about right. I could see that. I could see that happen for sure. All right. 
Next night we killed more in the vault with the distilleries. Yes. Oh, that's for. Oh, yeah. You're saying at the that night. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty cool too. I'll talk about that in a second too, Matt. Didn't get to be part of that, but I think I had enough after that. So. Sample number one. So after the vault, we Ubered back. Keep in mind at this point, I had to go right from my plane to the vault because I ran out of time. I didn't get to go to the hotel. I didn't get to check in. I had to have all carry all my luggage with me like an idiot. Thank goodness Scott and Bart drove uh, drove a truck. So I, I threw my luggage in there and um, I had Ubered back. So I had no luggage when I checked into my hotel room. I had no luggage, just the clothes on my back and the whiskey at La Quinta. And um, apparently, I my plan was when I got back to La Quinta to check into my room, obviously go upstairs and then come back down. And there was a huge, already a huge gathering started at La Quinta. So apparently, I went up to my room. Don't know what happened because all of a sudden I woke up on my bed and it was 5 a.m., 5 a.m. the first night. This was Friday. So 5 a.m. rolls around. I'm obviously still quite intoxicated when I wake up out of bed and I look around and look at my clock. I was like, oh no, what what happened? So I go to, I, I actually walked down to the lobby at 5 a.m. to see if anyone was still there. <laughs> no, no one was there. Everyone must have been so cashed out by then. Um, so I just went back upstairs. I didn't fall back asleep, actually. I, I tried, but... Um, I just waited till breakfast started. I went down at like 7 30, 8 a.m. Got breakfast and uh, no one was there for breakfast either. I mean, no one woke up out of bed till probably 10 a.m. that day. So when I finally, finally went back, um, there were a couple people down there. And man, people were not feeling good the next day. If I, I didn't feel good till about 10 a.m. that day. And then once 10 a.m. hit, I was fine. But that was funny. I Seriously, when I checked into the room, I was literally just planning on heading upstairs, coming right back down, and drinking with everyone. But apparently my body was like, no, you're passing out. Because I don't even remember laying down. But I woke up on the bed on top of the sheets, fully clothed, because I had no luggage. <laughs> so that's what happened. That is what happened. Lots of folks at breakfast at 9. Okay, yeah, I was there at 8, and then I didn't come back down until probably 10. So Jason says that was a rough morning for everyone. Yeah, I believe it. I'm telling you, you guys must have really been hurting if you were there all night downstairs at La Quinta 2 after the vault. <sighs> Next time I need to load up on barbecue before I go. I mean, missing that really hurt. Mm. 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 I'm guessing that's the wild, wild turkey 101 just off the off the bat oh thank you eric i was looking for that i was looking for that speedo thank you i'll need that back um we do some uh ice fishing in that in the winter time so i'll need that back but thank you thank you for keeping that safe for me <laughs> guy a guy says it was a good night for me yeah apparently i slept great i think because i didn't go down in the lobby after the vault, um, I felt a lot better the next day. I mean, Bobby was like seriously hurting next day. I don't know if he threw up or not, but the next morning he was like, I'm going back to bed. And this is like at breakfast. He's like, I'm going back to bed. I can't do this. And he didn't drink anything until probably a good amount of time into the, um, the actual event on Saturday. So <laughs> man, there were a lot of really, really nice bottles actually in the La Quinta lobby though. Friday night that I missed. There was an Eagle Rare store pick, didn't get to try. There was a Amaranth Grain of the Gods that I didn't get to try. So I missed some good stuff. Um, but when your body tells you no, your body tells you no. It's just gotta happen, you know? It's gotta happen. Eric, it was great to finally meet you too. Eric's um, a great guy. Um, just like his personality on his live streams too, Eric's the same way, you know, and that, that's awesome. Pretty much, honestly, pretty much everybody in this whiskey tube community, all the way down to like, you know, Rex and Daniel, like the way they acted in front of everyone was exactly the same as you see on camera. There's no faking, you know, there's no one being, being fake about the way they do things. You know, everyone's just there for each other, looking out for each other first. It's just awesome. It's actually awesome. 
Speedo! Speed no. <laughs> oh. Uh, apparently, Dark Meat Chicken, apparently that Czech liver light came on and it came on strong. But the next the next day I started drinking again at like 10 a.m. Um, wait, no, not 10 a.m. I'm sorry. The event didn't even start till later. So, but pretty much right when the event started, when the distillery started pouring is when I started drinking. I took it a lot easier on Saturday, of course. Um, but the actual event, so let's talk about the actual event a little bit. Um, there was a whole courtyard set up just for Whiskey Tube. You know, just if you wanted to go meet and greet with the Whiskey Tube community, anybody pretty much who was invited. That was awesome. Um, that's something new they had this year, I guess. They didn't have last year. So we all got our allotted times to, to talk to people. You know, obviously people were there mostly for the Whiskey Tribe and for, for that whole side of things, the Bastards Ball, trying a whole bunch of stuff from all the Texas whiskey distilleries. But to be able to meet some people and talk to some people just throughout the event, it was it was really awesome. It's um definitely the best whiskey event I've probably ever been to. So anyone who can get a chance to go to that in years to come, I would definitely recommend it. Mm. Eric's beard was in full effect. For sure. He's going to keep that thing forever now, I think. I liked it. <laughs> um, there were, man, must have been like 10 to 15 distilleries there, Texas whiskey distilleries. And they were pouring, I mean, multiples of their expression. So, I mean, obviously, again, there was no way to try everything at, at those places, too. You had to really be selective about what you wanted to try. Too much for me to name um, for the stuff I tried. I didn't drink, like I said, I didn't drink that much at the actual event. Um, yeah, bourbon junkies are definitely real. That's for sure. How's it going, Antonio? Good to see you, bud. Yeah, Sean and Dan are awesome. Um, and in real life, man, they're they're hilarious too. Just just like they are on on stream, you know. Great guys, I love them. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm pretty much just drinking this flight. I'm not really giving you guys any notes, so that's fine. Drinking some wild turkey. What's everyone else drinking now? We're, we've got to be on pour two, pour three here, right? What's everyone else have now? What do we move on to? Mm. Mm. Hang on, I just had a pop-up on my screen say, your PC is going to restart in 30 minutes. 29. That's not happening. There. You can wait till later. <laughs> Come on, you dumb thing. Yeah. There we go. Lagavulin says James Newman. I like the way you think. Uh, man, I'll tell you, going to the going to the vault though, it really did. I mean, there were some like actually life altering scotches you <laughs> get to try there. At least for me, you know, being being a bourbon background bourbon drinker. Jason, I don't need to see that flex. Okay, that's enough. I, I don't I don't need to know what Jason's drinking. I already saw on Instagram what Jason's drinking, so uh, take take that shit elsewhere, please. That looks pretty good though. I don't I don't know. I mean thirty bucks more, one year. I'm not convinced, but you know. Antonio, I'm serious, life altering. If you've never tried a Glendronic twenty seven that was like one of the first things I tried and it was I could actually like remember it and actually appreciate it. Man, <sighs> you know, it's one of those <laughs> sends chills down your spine and other parts of your body. It really does. It really does. Mm. Mm. Oh, I just love wild turkey. That's a good one. Whatever that is. That's got to be a Russell's pick. That looks really good. Mm. I know. DH Sub, you're absolutely right. <laughs> Vault. <laughs> Vault shook. <laughs> Captain. That's about right. That is about right. Vault shook. <laughs> I know, Dustin, though. Yeah, that is the first pour. It was. It was. It was. It was something. But that's what I'm saying. Like, it, it literally it just shows you, like, this is scotch. This is scotch and this is what you're missing. You know, this is what you should be focusing now with your life. Like you should now spend thousands of dollars on scotch instead of bourbon. You know, like that's what, that's the kind of thoughts that were creeping into my head. You know, this is a bourbon channel. I'm going to stick with bourbon for the most part. 
but don't be surprised if you start seeing some more scotches come out. Oh, James, so you got to try you got to try the uh, Ardbeg 19 at La Quinta. That was probably Friday when I was apparently sleeping in my room, not knowing what's going on. That's another one I wanted to try too. The 19, you know, it's kind of like an odd, it's like an odd spot of um, Ardbeg. I feel like there's the 21, the 23, all the other expressions. 19 is kind of like a weird spot. Um, when uh, Eric did his review of the 19, he was like the first one to do the review, I think. He, you know, he liked it, but I wasn't really convinced with the way he was saying the review that he liked it, liked it a lot. I mean, he's a big, you know, he, he likes Pete. He's a Pete guy. So we all grow up eventually, Jason says. <laughs> I know. I know. It's right. Uh, Johnny Drum says he got his first bottle of Russell's last night and blown away. Um, got more than Rare Breed. Yeah. I'm telling you. Did you get a, a store pick then? I assume you got a store pick and not just the shelf single barrel. It is. Russell's is some really good stuff. I mean really good stuff. Mm. Dustin, that's good to know. Eric might have mentioned that, but I didn't remember that. If you make it to Ohio, I have the 19. 19 is the oldest bottle they've done with their new stills. The 20s were their old stills. So you can taste a big difference between even the stills they used, Dustin. You're a guy with some scotch experience. Not even a pick, Johnny says. I know. I know. Russell's, even the even the normal not picks. Um, it's just good. Wild turkey's just good. I mean, I dare you to find a bad wild turkey. I'll wait. I will wait. Anyone who hasn't picked up a Russell's Reserve pick, pretty much anyone, even if it's just a normal off the shelf, do it. Peter White says, grab yourself the long row 18. Ooh, 18. What did I, what did I say? I tried the 16. The 16 was really good, man. Really good. 20s are very distinctive art bags. 19 is more their profile. Okay. Good to know. Obviously, I don't have enough experience with them, but... I think um, the third glass here for me is standing out so far, but we'll work back. We've got time. Uh, Charles Ashford says, 10-year bourbon for 35 bucks and awesome. Mmm. Mmm. Dark meat chicken, yeah. I'll give you that. Um... So the first time I tried Long Branch was actually at the distillery. It was part of their tasting. I think there were four or five samples in the tasting, which I have not put out my Wild Turkey Distillery review. You know, if you guys have been watching, I've been doing my distillery series, Kentucky Bourbon Trail Distillery Series, and I did go to Wild Turkey. It was actually one of my favorite, spoiler alert, but um, I have not talked about them yet. There's a lot, a lot of distilleries I visited, so... <laughs> so. But yeah, he said Long Branch was disappointing. That was one of them. First time I tried it was there. It was very unique. Um, I, I don't know. I obviously d didn't really file the, f follow the wild turkey profile for me. That's not, I mean, not necessarily a bad thing if it's good, but it was disappointing. I mean, it's more smooth sipping, low proof, a little bit of flavor with, you know, like the mesquitiness or whatnot, if you will. But they're trying to tailor to the masses. And the hips doys. The hips doys. Um, let's see. D Dustin said, if I didn't have a friend with them, I wouldn't either. 20-year art bags are stupid expensive. I know. Stupid expensive even for me. Yeah. Dustin says that. And this guy's on Discord. Like, here's the stuff I bought the last two weeks. He shows a picture of like 15 bottles. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, this guy. Mm-hmm. Dry man's exactly right. Wait till you get a store pick. I gotta say, I cracked this um, Meyer store pick, which is a Camp Nelson pick, and it was bounds and leaps different than my normal, or the other one I had, the uh, Warehouse F Russell's pick. Consider me a hipster. I like, <laughs> I like Long Branch, Antonio. Whiskey Quest says, your hipster buddy, embrace it. Embrace it. It's fine. <laughs> no, um, it's 
it still tastes like bourbon. Don't make me I mean, I can I can easily drink it, sip on it, and it's fine. You know, <laughs> Captain. Yeah. <laughs> Mesquite mellowing does give it a different profile, Jason. You're absolutely right. I don't know how I feel about the profile, though. I mean, like I said, it's it's okay. It's all right. So the only thing I saw that someone was drinking was, oh, I saw Russell's and I saw Lagavulin. Anybody else drinking anything unique out there? Dram Man, no. Um, the picks, one of, one of my stores, well, Meyer just got the pick, but it's the old bottle still. So I'm sure stores are starting to get picks more often now that the bourbon boom is picking up around here. So I'm thinking I'll get a new bottle at some time. I actually like the look of the new bottles. This is kind of an odd label to me, these Russell's bottles. Um, it's just kind of meh for me on the shelf. I mean, the, the whiskey inside is delicious, but the new bottles don't fall that far off the the trail of what what it is but you know it's it, i think it looks better it goes back to what the old bottles used to look like a little bit captain seven some balcones texas high plains single malt nice compass box no name first not the new one dustin that's another one i got to try um the second compass box no name and it was good it was good that <laughs> that stuff was good mark jg says op21 Mm. Christopher David is drinking some cigar blend. Very nice. Never tried that. You know, I don't know that I've ever had any Joseph Magnus, actually. It's the, the, the base expression with like the silver label or whatnot. That's available around me. It's just expensive. And, you know, it's expensive. But a lot of people say it's pretty good. We'll see. You know, I'll, I'll probably get it eventually. Just got to be in the right mood someday, you know. Johnny Drum asks, what's my favorite bottle design out of any bottle? Wow. That's a tough question, man. Um, you know, I really like the way Four Roses does their bottles. Like the Four Roses, I'm just looking at the Four Roses small batch, like they have the blown rose into the glass. And then they usually have pretty cool labels. You know, the store picks obviously get really cool. Some people put their custom stickers on it, which is really cool. I like that. Um, as far as base bottles go, the Old Fitz decanters are nice. I don't know. There's so many different ones that try to stick out on the shelf. Tough to know. I don't know. It's tough. Tough to say. How do you pick, you know? How do you pick? Uh, DH Silva says, if you make it to Ohio, just makes it 85. Not, yeah, it's, it's like 110 here. So that's exactly right. Uh, Lenny Scat says moving on to Binnie's Russell's Reserve Store pick. Very nice. You know, I had a Binnie's pick that actually placed higher than my Riverside pick. It's really good. Really good. Orangey Citrus Bomb for Captain, he says. Yeah, Cr Christopher David said the old Fitz bottles. Yeah, they're definitely nice. I mean, those decanter bottles. You're paying for the bottle, really. You know, that's the uh, the price difference. But they are nice bottles, and you can use them later. <laughs> I'm just reading ADHD Fishing's comment. Hipster whiskey on the nose, man buns and waxed mustaches, hints of vintage trench coat and organic zucchini. <laughs> ADHD Fishing just put out his first decanter video on uh, on YouTube. If you haven't seen that yet, it was hilarious. Freaking hilarious. Um, what do I say? It was great, buddy. It was great. Keep doing that kind of stuff. You had some some one liner like some one liners there that just got me. I was just dying laughing listening to you talk. That was such a good one. You're right, Dram Man. Blanton's bottle is definitely beautiful. That's probably I mean that's probably the the nicest bottle. It sticks out. You see it every time. Depending on the bottle, yeah, the whiskey can be very average, but that definitely sticks out. Buffalo Trace's marketing is just on point for sure. Mm. I love wild turkey. I just love wild turkey. Need to catch a catfish. Catfish. 
<laughs> he did. He decan tid that catfish. He really did. Ooh, nice, Eric. Um, Eric's going to go on after me, he said. That's awesome. Eric, I'll probably finish up around 10, maybe 10, 15. So, yeah, that'd be awesome, bud. If you want to roll on after, that'd be awesome. Uh, oh, you know, Hot Buttery Rolls. Another guy I got to meet down in Texas, too. Awesome guy. Just hilarious. Um, him and ADHD Fishing got to get together. That'd be some unstoppable content. But, yes, that's another good one. High West Bottles. Always stick out on the shelf. Always. It's a glorified wine bottle, and they got, you know, their distillery logo etched right into it. They really are. I, You know what? I brought a Boo Rye down to Texas. I didn't even crack the thing. I don't know if it ever got cracked open. Um, I was so debating what bottles to bring down to Texas. It was so tough to know. I brought my Michter's Toasted Barrel Rye. Um, actually, Hot Buttery Rolls ended up going home with the rest of my uh, Larceny Barrel Proof. It was about, I don't know, a third of the way left. So I was like, I'm not going to try to fly with this and have it spill over my luggage. So there you go, bud. Um, but yeah, that was a great bottle too. I, I really, really liked the Larceny Barrel Proof this year. I think they did a good job. Um, and then yeah, High West Boo Rye. I think Matt probably still has that bottle somewhere in his house of whiskey. Crusader's house of whiskey. <laughs> somewhere. But Boo Rye is another one. Um, actually, I don't think I, I never even tried that bottle. It was sealed still, so I figured, hey, let's bring that. Uh, Linux Cast, anyone ever had Murray Hill Club? I have not had that. Um, I believe if that's the bottle I'm thinking of, I've heard mixed reviews on that. I've heard some people say it's good and others no. So I have to see the bottle to make sure I'm thinking of the right one. But <laughs> That's right. Hot buttery rolls came in big time. Saturday night, La Quinta. How many pizzas did you end up buying, buddy? You you rolled in with these massive, large, large pizzas. Fed the whole place. He literally fed the whole place, and, like, that was so clutch. Coming in clutch with the pizza when you're drinking that much whiskey. Has to be done. Good work. Hot, buttery, arroz. Arroz. All right, well, these whiskeys are dwindling quickly. Um, hmm. Mm. Mm -mm. It's time to dump these. I have no idea which is my favorite. Um, <laughs> probably this one here, honestly. I'm not going to count down least favorite, but this is nothing. So that's this. Uh, Riverside. Riverside Russell's Reserve pick. Russell's Reserve are great, man. Mm. Russell's Reserve. Uh, Linux Cat, what did you say you found on the shelf? Uh, looks like Joseph Magnus. I can't read that far up. <laughs> that is what happens with wild turkey. You are right, Charles. You are right. Let's make an infinity turkey. Infinity turkey. Let me get these off of here. Yeah, he really did, Victoria. Hot buttery roll saved the night. Rolling in like a big shot with that pizza. Thank goodness. Uh, hot buttery roll says he's uh, shared with five people. Oh, nice. Excellent. There, I don't know. There wasn't that much to share, bud. But I'm glad you are. Yeah, give other people the chance to try stuff. That's true. I mean, that truly encompasses the the whiskey community. You know, it was awesome. Awesome hanging out with all you. I hope every one of you can make it down to Texas next year. If if we're invited back. <laughs> they may have got one look at me in that vault and said, nope, this kid's not coming back. So we'll see. I hope so. It was awesome. It was really awesome. Everybody was so great. A lot of hard work went into the event too. Um, things you don't realize, you know, setting all that up. Just having that many people in one place is, is a big undertaking, so... Couldn't be more grateful to everyone involved. Mmm. Well, that tastes better than anything by itself. 
Why is it that all infinite, infinity blends seem to do that? They just get better. When you mix stuff together at the end of the night, it's like stuff just gets better. Mm. Mm. It is. You get a lot more of that wild turkey nuttiness now coming through, which none of them individually had that much. Um, but man, that nuttiness. Big ass slices. <laughs> That's how I read that. Big ass slices. It was too. They were huge. Nine pizzas. I don't even know if anyone fin if we were able to finish all that, honestly. Nine pizzas, but those things were so big it literally was like 15. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Captain. I think we can pull off one more big to-do at the La Quinta before the fire department shuts us down. La Quinta 2020! <laughs> I know. You're right. There's got to be a capacity limit there. There's got to be. The first night I heard was even more insane. Um, apparently the second night was a lot more mellow. And my gosh, there there were more bottles than people on those tables. So, <sighs> crazy, crazy. Hmm. <sighs> Wow, that's impressive. Captain says there were only two slices left at the end of the night. About 3.30 in the morning, I had a piece. So there was enough left for me at that time. That was right before I left on my Uber to fly out at 6 a.m. the next day. 6 a.m. the next day, I had to fly out Saturday. So this was the worst planned trip ever on my part. I got in late thanks to the delay, Friday. I didn't even get in Friday till well, 5 p.m. or whatever it was. And then I had to leave at 6 a.m. on Sunday. So I had to Uber over from the hotel at 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> it was terrible. Terrible, man. I'm telling you. Christopher David, thank you so much, brother. Coming in with a $20 super chat. Still bummed. Couldn't make it down to meet everyone in Texas. Next year it is. Better not pass out. I won't. I've learned my lesson. Thank you so much for that, brother. Really appreciate it. I probably got something on here for you. Let me find it. I don't know what I'm on. Whiskey. Is it frozen? What's going on? You know what I mean. Fantastic. Always love the bathrobe. I almost brought the robe down to Texas, honestly. I almost did. But I was like, nah. I can't be that cringy. I cannot be that cringy. Probably passed out. <laughs> Captain says you were looking rough. <laughs> what well, you talk well you didn't even see me you didn't even see me um till the event actually is where I first met Captain. <laughs> On Saturday, but yeah, it was like 3.30 in the morning. You should have seen Sean, though. Sean from Bourbon Junkies. He was staying up all night, too, because they had to fly out at 6 a.m. as well. He was like, man, that boy can go hard. He went hard on, on the whiskey late at night, and he was trying to stay awake. I went up to my room to do some final packing at like 3 in the morning. Sean's just sitting on a couch in the lobby, kind of off the lobby, like by the elevator. He's like, if I pass out, make sure you wake me up before you leave. <laughs> I was coming down in like a half hour. And when I came back down, he was passing on the couch, of course. So I woke him up, and I think he walked over to the truck where Dan was passed out. So, oh, man. Guy Davis says, you better bring the robe next year. Mm, we'll see. We'll, we will see. It can happen. It would definitely be a converse, conversation piece, if nothing else. But I have, like, a sweating problem, so I'd probably be sweating my ass off in the robe. I can't even imagine. I would be sweating my ass off. No way. I don't think I could do it. I don't think I could do it, man. Especially Texas heat. But this trip in Texas, I actually could have worn the robe because we woke up and it was like in the 40s. The whole day was a perfect temperature, like 60, 65 to 70, I would say. A little overcast, so you weren't dying of heat exhaustion. You couldn't ask for better weather, at least for me, what I like, you know. Captain says he was the last one to leave La Quinta on Saturday. Um, he was somehow worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I don't know. Captain was, man, you were a trooper. I know you, you were able to, uh, like get a ride home or whatever. You, you lived close luckily. So thank goodness. Dustin says, uh, row, but nothing under it. You'll be fine. Famous last words. You'll be fine. Don't worry about it. I don't know though. It doesn't tie very, very well. So I could be, could be tough. I might get kicked out sooner than I want to. <laughs> 
Just don't wear anything under it. People are asking for it. It's a good point, James. If Vito can wear an eagle suit, I can put on some kind of costume. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, ADHD finishes. I heard if you ask the pharmacist, they can hook you up with a good, good antiperspirant. I got you covered, brother. I got you covered. I need it, though. For real. <laughs> No, you, Captain, you look fine. Yeah, I know I know you met Sean. Sean was somehow worse, but you you seemed fine at the end of the night. Maybe you just hide it well or something, but I thought you were totally fine. I thought you could have dr driven, but that probably tells you the state I was in. <laughs> you know? <laughs> mm. I behaved until Sunday, Carl says. Mm, till Sunday. You you were drinking some in the vault too. You were pouring mostly, but in the vault, I feel like you were probably pretty good. You were, you know, you were you were doing your somli duties. You did well. Um, yeah, Sunday that was the uh, it's bourbon night meetup, probably right where you went a little crazy. I'm guessing. <laughs> good stuff. <sighs> More from the four hours of sleep the night before, Captain says. Mm hmm Yes, sir. Got that right. <laughs> Next year, I have to make it out to Matt's place. I really hope so. It sounds like Jason had a fabulous time at Matt's place. Saw the live stream from there. The live stream looked great. Um, maybe I'll try to spend the night at Matt's house, see if that goes over well. <laughs> oh, man. I would love to spend a night in Matt's house, honestly, though. It's like Whiskey Vault on its own. I mean, it really is. Um, and then I'll be at the house, so if I pass out, I pass out. It's like, it's okay, you know? <laughs> oh, man. Thank goodness for Uber, though. Uber was a lifesaver on the Texas trip for me. So I didn't even rent a car because I was like, nope, this, it's not going to happen. You just have to you have to just get an Uber. It's better that way. You, know, you got to be responsible. You really do. <laughs> Probably my most memorable part, memorable part of this trip was Eric, as we're leaving the event on Saturday, Bill was riding in the passenger seat. I was in the back seat and um, Eric was driving. There was a huge line of people trying to leave the um, the crowded barrel. They were getting waiting in line for their Ubers or the shuttle to take them to wherever the location was. Eric blasts. I mean blasts. <laughs> South Park? <laughs> South Park, uh, what song was it, Eric? Uh, oh, Poker Face. Was it Poker Face? Yeah, Poker Face. South Park with Cartman singing it. If you haven't seen that video, you need to watch that. J just listen to the song. Eric literally rolled down the windows, so all you could see was Bill sitting in the passenger seat, blaring Poker Face by Cartman. And we were driving by, he was driving by as slow as he possibly could past this line of people waiting for the shuttle. It was the best day ever. Oh, it was so good. That was that was probably my favorite part, honestly. It was just great. Probably one of those things you had to be there for. So I got much more amusement out of it than any of you will that I'm describing it to. But I'm telling you, it was really funny. <laughs> Eric was great. Eric was just great. <laughs> mm. Boy, that's probably my favorite. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Let's end the night with what time is it? Two minutes till ten. All right, let's um, let's end the night with another Texas whiskey. Stay on theme here, but which one? Um, I've got something sent to me here from uh, Captain Make It Happen. Balcones Pot Still. So let's let's dive into this one. Balcones sounds pretty nice. Grab my old Texas glass again. Mm. Captain actually used like a very professional label printer for these sample bottles he sent. Just fabulous. The guy knows what he's doing. I know, Captain, but that's fine. Honestly, it smells good. It smells good, man. Balcones just has that house profile, you know? Okay, that's perfect, Eric. That'll work perfectly. You 
Guy Davis says, me and me and my friends ended many nights at the bar in Dallas with poker face. <laughs> I assume you're talking about the guy, the, the, uh, the, the song, right, guy? <laughs> Fantastic. Dark Meat Chicken, thank you so much, buddy. Came in with a $5 super chat saying, have a wonderful weekend, whiskey drinkers. Cheers. Cheers to you, brother. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Let's see what we got here. Oh, God. I forgot about that. Anybody can can anybody name where that came from? Anybody. That was actually a video I put out, but I think I pulled it off. Not actually a video, but it was so it was something I did. If anyone can name where that's from, I'd be pretty impressed. <laughs> that's true, Captain. High proof balconies is really where the money's at, but honestly, it's sometimes it's good to just go to the well. You know, go to the well. <laughs> It's the floss, but I did it in one of my videos that I took down. It was before something. I don't play Fortnite, but yeah, that's originally how how it started with Fortnite, you know. That was actually in my, um, I did an intro video for announcing that I was going to be doing my 1,000 subscriber celebration. And it was like a celebration. I did a whole bunch of dances in the beginning of the video. Not, I mean, only like 150 people watched it pro or something like that, so... I took it down and it's not something that would stay up there since it was an intro to my live stream I was going to be doing, but I did some pretty bad dances in that, and that was one of them, the floss, you know, the floss. <laughs> not my best, not my best work, not my best work. D Psycho says, I'm thinking as much as you drank the first night in Texas, it may have benefited you to throw up. I felt fine the next day. I felt fine the next day. I mean, in the morning, it was a little rough to keep anything down. Like, I just felt like I was going to throw up. If I drank any water or anything, it was like, oh, no. But then 10 a.m. rolled around. I was fine. 10 a.m., I was perfectly fine. Thank you very much. I appreciate the concern. Hmm. Mm. This definitely does taste low proof, Captain. You're right. I probably have some higher proof balcones, even that you sent me. That's not from Captain. Ooh, compass box no name. Let's do this. This is batch one. This is also from Captain. Let's do this. Let me get a different Glen here. Ah, oh, Carl, no, I didn't. He asked if I tried the old Pulteney 21 I had, or you guys had Saturday night. No, I don't think so. Saturday is a little tougher to remember what I tried. Um, I didn't go to sleep until, I literally was up for 40 hours starting at 5 a.m. on Saturday morning. I was up 40 hours straight before I finally fell asleep. <laughs> Captain, I know. We're going off the rails right now. It's a it's quite a it's quite a jump. I know. I know, but I, I scotch sounds good now. I, I could go for some scotch, you know. Alright. My PC apparently needs to really update here. Not happening. Alright, let me pour this. <laughs> Captain. Oh, but I'm into it. <laughs> Old Pulteney 21. I'd love to try that, Carl. Um, man, I think, uh, was it Bill that did Old Pulteney Night? Um, I watched a good amount of that and um, learned a little bit about the distillery. That was really cool. Christopher David, I was a big fan. I only tried the one, like pretty much two sips of the uh, the, the No Name 2 down at the vault, but that I was a fan of that. It was really, really good. A really good balance of flavors. Mm-hmm. I am, Captain. This might be... I, I've never, ever seen Compass Box, you know? So it's like, who knows? I'll save a little bit, just in, just in case I get in the mood. The mood, you know? Oh. 
I don't know, man. The, the, the nice peatiness on this too, though. Someone remind me, Compass Box, uh, no name, one. What are the what are the whiskeys that are in this? For all my scotch drinkers out there. Because it definitely smells Ardbeg-ish. ardbeg -ish. Oak and Smoke, how you doing, buddy? Thanks for coming in. Good to see you. Checked out your uh, Stag Junior review you did recently. Good stuff. Good stuff. Mostly 13-year Ardbeg. That explains the Ardbeg. Okay. Thirteen or fourteen year, okay. I mean, I feel like that's probably a good age group for Ardbeg because, in general, you know, I I like getting hit in the face with that peat. You know, a lot of us do. So I think that's good. I thought there was Kalila in this too. I thought I thought someone had said that. Mm. 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 Hmm. A face you make when you uh, mm. Klein leash and Kalila. Okay, that's good, man. Boy, that's good. I just wish that was more readily available. I would waste a lot of money on that. Um, Carl says the uh, old Pultney one was forty six percent. So yummy. I'm sure that was good. Eric, I want you to start your stream that way. Okay, start it with the Cartman poker face, please. Please, I'll be in chat. So if you do that, um, you might get demonetized, but it's okay. I'm sure the Super Chats alone will take care of that. So don't worry about it. <laughs> Dustin says it's just sitting on the shelves here. You know, I guess I could probably find a store that can either... Is it available, like where they could order it for me then? Because maybe I can get a store that could order it for me. Because if it's just available, man. That's so good. Number two is Majority Kalila. Now, Christopher David, when I tried Compass Box 2, you could taste the peat, but I feel like this was more heavily peated than um, than Batch 2. The um, the number two just, it was more of like fruitiness I got out of it, you know? More of those fresh fruit citrus notes to me. Mmm. Mm, mm, mm. Kentucky, so no shipping, but if you really want it, I can help you there. <laughs> Thank you, Dustin. I appreciate that, and I'll definitely keep it in mind. I appreciate it, buddy. Happy to return the favor if there's anything in Michigan you're interested in, but you know. Slim, pi slim Pickens over here. A lot of this wasn't from Michigan, just so you know, for the record. Unfortunately. Mark JG came in with the uh, the stats here. Sixty percent malt from Klein Leash. What? The? Just block. All right, I gotta get something different here. If this is blocking my chat, I can't read what it says. My mouse doesn't reach over here. Sheesh! Unbelievable. Sixty percent aged malt from Klein Leash. Twenty percent malt from Delu Deluier. I'm sorry if I can't say that. 20% aged malt from, and now teen, teenic. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't, I, I'm sorry, Mark. I'm, I'm not good with scotch distilleries. Where's Roy when you need him? Where is Roy? Roy could do this for me, no problem. Roy's another one I got to meet. Um, talked to him a little bit there. I mean, Roy was obviously very, very popular. And, what, you know, everyone wanted to meet Roy, so I don't blame him. He's a great guy, and what a whiskey ambassador honestly that man is such a whiskey ambassador no name is 75.5 percent ardbeg that's beautiful beautiful oh captain said yes that's the number two recipe okay i was gonna say where's the ardbeg because this is <laughs> this smells like ardbeg <laughs> mm. Honestly, boy, I don't know. That's good. That's just good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
You can't say no to that pop-up again. Auto restart. Hi, I'm Carl from IT. <laughs> I know. Next time I'm restarting my computer before the stream, learn that. 10% <laughs> Kalila, 13.4 Klein Leash, 0.5% of something else. Well, that 0.5% can make all the difference, buddy. You know that. You know it can. I want to be so good at tasting whiskey someday that I can pick out what that 0.5% is. Goals. Whiskey goals, man. Whiskey goals. Whew. We're beyond that point. Beyond that point. Roy is sleeping, no doubt. Yes, he is. He absolutely is. In his bed of whiskey, I'm sure. All right, it is... 1010. Eric is going on in five minutes. Let's wrap up. Um, I just finished my one more sip. Let's finish it. Mm. Scotch, man. Gonna be the death of me. The end of my marriage, most likely. Let's wrap up. Um, thank you for hanging out now. This is Friday. We talked Texas. We tried some wild turkey. Didn't really talk about wild turkey, but we tried some wild turkey. Anybody who can get the opportunity to go on any, just go to any whiskey event and get to talk whiskey with fellow whiskey lovers, whiskey enthusiasts, please do it. It doesn't have to be a massive event like Texas was. It can just be your local bar. My local bar here by me gets, puts on these, these events all the time, these tastings. Do that. You'll, you'll meet friends you want to hang out with all the time. Um, please do it. You know, it's, it's an awesome community and you will not regret it. I promise you. But I appreciate y'all hanging out tonight. Thanks for talking, Texas. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you all for being in chat with me. Um, you could be doing a lot of things on Friday night. You could be watching the playoffs, baseball. Tigers suck, so I don't care anymore. But um, anyway, thank you all so much. Make sure you do head over to Eric Waite's live stream. He's going to be starting up in about three minutes. So let's finish off with that. Cheers, everyone. Um, Thank you for all you do. Thank you for the super chats tonight. Thank you all for just hanging out and being awesome. Have a great night, everyone.